Hello and welcome to the PPD YouTube channel, folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. It's great to see you again. Happy Friday. It's the end of July and things are just rolling right along. We're, we're getting into setup season and we're getting into, we're definitely into build season. If you're not building your stuff, you're probably falling a little bit behind. So, But don't worry, if you're working on doing things in x lights I've got a couple solutions whenever you're creating your sequences and we'll get right to it after this. Welcome back, folks. I want to get right to it. So this week's lesson is going to be on timing tracks and how you can begin to use a lot of the tools that are already in X-Slice to help you come up with some good timing tracks that are kind of auto-generated. But not only that, creating useful timing tracks. Now, I've discussed some of these topics in various videos over the years, and I'm going to make mention of one of them right out of the gate here. Let me go grab it. There we go. Uh, this video here, Audacity Queen Mary Vamp Timing Plugin, it's from 2020, but it walks you through the install process and it gets very in-depth and detailed into learning more about the Queen Mary Vamp plugins and how they're useful. Um, and I'll link it down below or maybe I can put a card up here for it. That video is very helpful in walking you through the process of here's a piece of music, here's music, there's sequencing that we're going to work with, and it creates different timings for you. Uh, I'll, I'll do this as a, uh, as a quick uh, addition. You can right click and you can select and add a new timing track. Once this, those vampire plugins are added in, you can select from many different forms of timings that you can auto generate using the vampire plugin. But you can come in here and you can get different timing tracks. So here's here's one called onsets. Uh, it's, this one's rather useful. Uh, it comes up with different start times when a, when, a, when a note actually begins. So you can you can utilize that in your programming. Maybe that's an exact start point or so forth. So uh, just just one of those. That's probably number one in helping you come up with helpful, useful things in XLights automatically. Sometimes the vampire plugins work very well, and sometimes they don't, and you end up having to go and do things just a little bit more manually. So when that happens, uh, what you can do is, and you have, you always start out in X-Lights with an empty timing track. Now, um, I recommend, I recommend that whenever you're listening to the music, uh, you listen for the beats. Now, you, you can see I've got the beat tracker down here. It says one, two, three, four. This looks like it's lined up pretty good. Let's see if I can get some beats in here. Uh, yeah, there we go. So it's keeping pretty good pacing with the, with the timing of the music. The beats are there, and so it's laid those beats out automatically for you. However, in some instances, it doesn't always do it nice and neatly. So maybe you feel like you need to go in and do your own timing tracks or your own beat marks. And what you can do is you can create an empty timing track by right-clicking and adding an empty timing track. So if we add this empty timing track, it, it, it defaults as empty, and you can name it whatever you want. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to call this demo. And it adds it down lower on the list. So what you can do is you can select it, and once it's selected, we can use the other functions in XLights that help us kind of find different things. So you can hover over top of the waveform here, and you can use your right-click menu. And on this right-click menu, you have a few options. Now, if you didn't know about some of these things, it's rather interesting. So what I would suggest is take the time to go through these. So there's three different pre-built or pre-defined uh, timing tracks that you can uh, view using the built-in uh, defaults from X-Lights. One is the base waveform. So here, and if, if you scroll left and right, you can see, hey, look at those little bumps right there on that, on that timing grid, right? When you see those little bumps, if we zoom in, and I'm just hitting the plus key on my keyboard, I'm just zooming in, some of those might end up lining up exactly with the timing marks. Some of them might not. But this might give you an idea to, here's our demo. We can use the lowercase letter T on our keyboard, and we can hit a T for timing. And see, everywhere one of those little uh, moments starts, we can put a little uh, timing mark in. 
and notice that they're kind of offset. That might mean that might mean that there's something a little bit different going on during those parts of the song. So let's go ahead and put the the raw waveform back, and let's see if if we hear anything at those points. So it sounds like a little bit of piano in the background. So it's picking up on the upbeat or the half note or the uh, the eighth note, eighth note. It would be an eighth note, and that's what it's picking up on, especially in that piano section right there. Uh, and every song is going to be different because some songs are heavier on the beat, and some songs are more orchestrated, and you don't hear you know a heavy tap click track in the background that runs the whole song from start to finish. So it, it all depends on the music style. But using this, uh, you can go through not just the bass waveform, here's the treble, and uh, if, you, if you notice the treble, and you can play it whenever it's like this, it's a, it's a little more muted. We can turn that up a little bit, and this is another function that you might not know about. We can make this a little bit louder, I have this on very soft, but uh, because this song is quiet, there you can hear it a little bit better. You can also uh, change this from treble to alto, and now you have a different version of the same timing track. All of these little bumps here on the timing track are helpful in one way or another so that you know when something starts or begins to happen in, in that MP3. The other thing I'm going to share with you is you've got a double height waveform. So what that does is that expands it, that, that, that exaggerates everything. And now you can see it just a little bit more clearly. Uh, it's interesting to be able to go in and look at some of these things. Now the last one that I'm going to share is custom waveform. And this custom waveform, now you can change the high note that you're looking for and the low note that you're looking for. And you can make it very specific. So what X Lights will do is it will break down the, uh, the MP3 and it will look for the, that frequency range, that MIDI note range. And if you click OK, now it's going to just find those. And since it did that, it, it comes out with, here's the, exact, here's the exact range that we're working in or that you're looking for. If you want to look up more information on MIDI, I'm sure you can do a quick Google search on that little bit of fun to play with there. The other thing that I think is important to share with you, not just with timing tracks, but it's also with music as far as the, the pace at which that it runs. And some songs are quicker, some songs have very fast lyrics. Uh, on very fast songs that have a higher tempo, I do recommend that whenever you create a new sequence, and I'll, I'll, I'll go through this real quick here, uh, you you might not want to do um, uh, 50 millisecond timing. You might want to do uh, 25 millisecond or 40 frames per second when you start up your new sequence. Uh, the, the the tighter the timings, uh, you, it allows you a little bit more space in between each of these little timing marks here. You get a, an, an extra click between them. Like this would be 20 frames and this would be 10 frames. If you want to learn more about frames per second, we did a whole other video on that. You're welcome to go watch that. It's actually a pretty good video. It gives you a great uh, understanding of frames per second whenever it comes to uh, sequencing in X-Lights. Um, and then the other thing that I want to share with you because of that tempo is the audio. Down here in this audio list, one of the things that many people fail to take advantage of whenever they're sequencing is the ability to play an MP3 at a different speed. Why would this be helpful? Well, in the early days when we did uh, manual timing tracks for our lyrics, when we did a lyric track, we would try to do that in like 40 frames per second. And then we would also use the speed to slow down so we could exactly hear the beginning and the end where whenever you're looking at your song, here's the beginning, here's the end, where does the, where does the word start, where does the word finish, and where does the next word start. And so slowing down the song is incredibly helpful. So you can change the pace of the music by simply selecting a different speed. And I'm going to set it to three quarter speed. I'll let you hear it first. We'll go ahead and leave this on full speed. And so you can hear the... Okay, and now we'll go back and we'll play it at a uh, three-quarter speed. So if keep, keep in mind, if you're trying to do lyric tracks and lining those words up so the phonemes and the lips 
are working at the right pace than, than slowing it down. And now you can tell that hey, it, it's a little bit slower. You can still hear the, de the you can still hear that definition in the song. You can still pick out things. If you wanted to get ultra specific and you were doing your timing marks as the MP3 moved along, you could do it in a slower pace. So if we were listening for certain things like. Um, let me go to, uh, we'll go in and you can add timing marks manually by hitting the letter T. So let's. So it, it, just in this instance, um, and, and I'll put, I'll put, um, I'll put some effect on it here. Let's change this to uh, pace by timing. I'm just going to put the down effect on here, and I'm going to put that on the all stars. And let's just go look at the uh, let's go look at the stars here. So uh, if we go ahead and go back to audio and we play this at the regular speed, play at full speed. And there you can tell that, hey, it's kind of nice if you slow down the music, gives you a little bit more to play with, and not only that, it gives you the opportunity to really dial it in. Now, remember, you're not stuck with exactly where those timing marks uh, uh, are whenever you hit the lowercase letter T. You can always come down here, zoom in, and you can manually move these if you hover your mouse over top of them. If maybe you were slightly off in one of the pickups, then you could come down here you could right click and you could change this to whatever uh, base waveform. Let me zoom out there. There we go. I don't know why it, it uh, might be a little bug in X lights that it shows as a as a line, but um, but yeah. Uh, so if you're if you're trying to find, let's say maybe that's an alto waveform, and and this maybe lines up a little bit better right here. And maybe, maybe these line up a little bit better if they're here. It's up to you. That's what some of these tools are for, that you can take the time and you can build it exactly the way that you like to get the very best results for the song that you're trying to work on. And there you have it, guys. A couple of helpful hints whenever it comes to looking at timing tracks, looking at the audio menu. You have different speeds that you can slow down the MP3 to. You can speed it up, too, if you want to. Whenever I'm reviewing songs, uh, and going back through to see if everything kind of fits together and look for some big things, I speed up the MP3 track so that I can, I already know everything looks kind of good, but if something doesn't look good, it's going to show up in a flash of an eye and it's not going to look right. So I can stop the music there, slow it down, and go fix the one thing that kind of, you know, doesn't look right or whatever. But you have so many of these options, you have so many of these functions that are built into X-Lights with the timing track, the right click, looking at the bass waveform, looking at the alto or the tenor, uh, or selecting one that's, that, that's your own, or growing it and making it wider. So it's just useful and more easy to see whenever you have an MP3 that's on the lighter side and it's not as loud. And there you have it, guys. Thank you for joining us in this week's Twinkle Tip Friday video. We hope this video was helpful and informative and took a little bit of uh, frustration out of your sequencing and getting started with certain things. If you like the video, please give us a huge thumbs up if you haven't done yet so. Hit the subscribe button down below and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another Twinkle Tip Friday video or any of the other videos that we put out. This week coming up, we have a webinar and it's an exciting webinar. It's going to be a shock what we do in this webinar coming up this Tuesday night in our intro to RGB series. Yes, that's right. We're doing another and we have a special guest joining us. So you don't want to miss this one. And finally, guys, if you appreciate the things that we do here at Pixel Pro Displays, consider joining the PPD Sequence Club where we do one awesome sequence each and every month, brand new to the store just for you. And you get a choice of two other songs if you don't care for the first song. We change all three songs out every single month, so you have three different songs every month to choose from. And you get great deals on services, you get great deals from our vendor affiliates, and you get great deals to keep your hobby rolling and saving you money with your hobby purchases that you're going to be making anyway. 
So guys, that's everything for me here. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful day. We'll see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye for now. who's out there waiting for something interesting, and I think I have something that's right up your alley. Alley, your alley. Hello and welcome to the PPDU, you do, 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 do. You have so many of these functions that are built into XSlice with the timing track, the right click, looking at the, uh, looking at the, looking at the, looking at the, what is that called?